William McBratney, I think he might have been traveling alone, although maybe he was with his brother John. Anyway, they were from Ireland, Northern Ireland. And William, I believe, had contracted tuberculosis and was coming to the United States in an effort to recover from his TB. The story I heard is they, were, they did not have a destination. They were on a westbound train, somewhere in the Midwest, let's say. And they struck up, struck up a conversation with some of the passengers and explained, William McBratton explained that he was seeking cure for his tuber tuberculosis. And one of the passengers on the train said, well, you should consider Monrovia, California. It's known as a health center. So that is why they ended up in Monrovia. He did gradually recover. And as soon as he was able, he started selling linens, finely woven Irish linens. And he did it with a little, he had a little hand cart. And he would go around from residence to residence. He'd knock on the door, talk to the lady of the house, and show samples of what was available. They would order. He would send the order back to Ireland where they would create the fabric, the, the item that the lady wanted and then it would be shipped back and he would deliver it. Finally, he had enough business that he could warrant opening a storefront on Myrtle Avenue in the 400 block. I think he started out maybe at 421, 419 South Myrtle Avenue. And his brother went into business with him. Their sister Elizabeth went into business. Their business grew. They took over the stores on either side at one point. They had three stores in a row. And by the time I remember, they had taken over four stores, extending down to the corner of Lemon and Myrtle. The corner location had been a drugstore and they finally took that over to accommodate their business. The building was the, the building that we're in was the Bartle and Corrins building built by John Bartle and um, William Corrins had a basement. I can remember as a youngster going down in the basement. I talked to the current owner of Gray and Cash Coffee Shop, and apparently he'd been down in the basement also, reported as being somewhat scary. Yeah. But by this time, they were selling much more than just they linen. They became a full-fledged department store. They branched out. They no longer they sold dresses, men's clothing, children's clothing, household items. I have a set of tumblers that I bought from them, probably about 1967. Yeah. But their, their merchandise was somewhat high end. And I know that people from all over the San Gabriel Valley came to Monrovia specifically to shop at McBratney's because of the quality of the merchandise they offered, especially the linens. So how long did it last? What happened to it? It went to the second generation of ownership and operation, and they decided about 1967 or 68 to retire. They sold it to another department store, Weinman's, who had a store in Huntington Park. The Weinman's bought it. They changed the merchandise, kind of eliminated the specialty items. And in so doing, they alienated themselves from some of their customer base, people who came specifically because of the specific items they carried in stock. And so after about a year or two years of operation, Weinlands realized they were not making the profit they had hoped for, so they closed. So it went out of existence after about uh, 50 plus years in terms of a store location. I think it started probably about 1912 or 13. So it lasted about 50, let's say 53 years, 55. And the McBratneys lived? They lived several places, but they bought, John McBratney's wife, Elsie, bought a large Spanish colonial revival house on Gold Hill, the east, west end of Gold Hill. It wasn't built by them, it was built by another family. But they bought it, lived there for a number of years. Fun story. Bill Quiggle, who was the son of 
built of the uh, Jack Quig no, come on, what's the first name? Help me with this one. Bill Quiggle. Thomas. No. Tom Thomas? Quiggle. Thomas. Yeah. Anyway. Town Marshall. He worked for the McBradneys as a chauffeur. During the Depression, well, no, actually during Prohibition. And he was in charge of driving the family down to the beach. That might have been Newport, might have been Balboa. Anyway, either coming or driving down or coming back. They were almost in an accident that Bill scarefully avoided by just some very quick motions and driving. So they got back to the house, unloaded the car. Mrs. McBratney invited him into the house and she looked at him and she said, Mind you, this was prohibition. She said, I don't know about you, Bill, but I could stand, a, I could go for a stiff drink. So she, in the dining room, she walked over and opened a secret panel in which they kept their contraband hooch, and poured them both a stiff drink so they could celebrate the fact that yes, they escaped or they survived their trip to the beach and back. <laughs>